Auzubillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum to everyone. Um, I'm here again with a new lecture on uh, family relations and child development. I just, I think every single day I realize that I have to talk more and more about it. And every single day I hear so many cases of divorces coming up. Even today I heard a case um, and felt really bad about it because while I was working in the classroom with one of the child, I was like doing an art craft with him and he made something, something so beautiful that I asked him to take it home. And for him home was something hard to accept. And then I asked him, why don't you want to take it home today? And he said, and he's a six year old boy, okay? And he said that I can take it after two days. And I was like, why do you want to take it after two days? You should be so, you are already so excited and you want to show it to your parents. So why don't you want to take it today? And he said that, no, I'm going to take after two days. And when I asked him the reason, he said, because after two days, I'm going to go to my mom. And then I realized, okay, the child is divided, split, and going into two different families, you know, one week with father and one week with mom. And then um, because I was just uh, substituting, so I also had a talk with the, the lead teacher and she did mention that, yes. And she thanked me, in fact, that you did this craft work with the child because he got really happy when you did it. And he is feeling proud of his work, but he's going to save it for his mom. So, you know, when you hear such stories, you don't like it because, and I'm a teacher, I know when children go through so much, when children go through so much, I wish I could tell the parents that it's not easy for them. It's not easy for them to pass through difficulties. Just imagine yourself, you are an adult. Even today, honestly, even now, if I would have seen my parents uh, in a kind of conflict and breaking up, I would just go, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't be myself, definitely. Because I'm a person who wants to keep families together. Because, you know, like, maybe because it, it's, it has been my subject always, family relations and child development in college, and then studying about Montessori, Montessori who again talks about peace, who talks about bringing different cultures together, bringing the whole world together, and then Montessori talking about, you know, how one is dependent on the other, one living being is de dependent on the other, and how animals and, uh, and humans, they are all dependent on each other, and even plants, and making peace in the world and then when i look into my religion that is islam i definitely find all those things again so strongly with firmness that allah wants us to do the same he wants us to avoid conflicts he wants us to be easygoing people he wants us to be happy people even in difficulties be happy and thankful be grateful of what is good around us and then keep going and keep going, you know. That's what he wants from us. So just again, a little small comparison from my classroom today. So this is one of the surahs uh, number three and uh, surah Imran, ayat number 191. I'm reading the translation. Who remember Allah while standing or sitting or lying on their sides and give thought to the creation of the heavens and the earth saying our lord you did not create this aimlessly exalted are you above such a thing then protect us from the punishment of the fire so you know it's about them who are remembering allah you know in in all the times no matter what they are doing even if they are at work and or they are at home or wherever they are remembering Allah and then accepting that you know there is a reason for the uh, for creation and creating this world just yesterday when I was with the kids outside in the playground I 
I observed four trees just next to each other. Every single tree was different from the other in beautiful colors and different colors of green. And same is with every other creation. Allah has created each one of us in a special way. Just imagine, look at your family. Are the siblings same? No. Are the parents same for everybody? No. Are Oh, and what about the children? I, I, I work with 28 children in the classroom. None of them is the same. Every single child is different. So can you imagine the creation of the Lord? How Allah has created each one of us in a special way? Needs of children is the same. Needs of adults is the same. Needs of husband and wife or mother or children or, you know, people in the family that the needs would be the same. But... The personality of each and every one is different. And what does Allah want from us? That's the big question, right? So if we compare in the classroom, just like I always give example of the classroom. And when we talk about resolving conflicts, uh, conflict, so um, Montessori is with the same view that we want to make the children independent, intervene only when it is needed, so if they are having a conflicts and conflicts will definitely going to come it's not that conflicts will not come definitely conflicts will come what do we do then we definitely let them let them resolve conflicts try resolving the conflicts on their own we do provide tools in the classroom that you know they they could take help with but then we let them resolve conflicts and see and observe who is taking a part of resolving it, who is creating further mess, who is being helpful. So teacher keeps an eye on every kind of a child, but definitely conflicts will be there. But then um, the ones who are suffering, teacher will be more towards them, but not showing the other one, definitely. And indirectly being helped before they get into conflicts, preparing them for those situations. So what is Quran doing and what is Allah doing in Quran? He is providing a guideline that if a conflict arises, what you're supposed to do. If there is an issue of, you know, inheritance, what you should do. If there is a conflict between husband and wife or mother and children or father and children, or in the rights of children, rights of anybody in the family, it is in the Quran. Everything is mentioned in the Quran. And then in Sunnah, in, in the life of Prophet Muhammad, you see the example. He has, he has, you can see him in every relationship. You can even see him in his profession. You can see him in his friends. You can see him. You can read about him and he's the best person on earth. The best example Allah uh, has presented for us to see and then to act upon to follow so again i would come back to my classroom and see how every conflicts are there so every child is different there are children who complained a lot don't we see that they would every time come to the teacher and say oh uh Hashir is hurting me and bill is creating a problem and you know like they will come again and again to you Allah is fine with that, of course. He wants, he wants us to go and talk to Him and, you know, rather. But then what more does He want from us? So, yeah, I, he, he, we should feel contented that yet we are taken care and then go back and start working. So, fine, you do complain, but the, keep going, keep going. That's what we teacher want from children. Okay, I heard you. Let's go, keep going. And then... We are just teachers, right? We are helpless. But Allah does more, of course. He would definitely take away all the sorrows and the, and would definitely resolve things for us. We just need to have that firm belief. So then there are children who take care of, of them in the classroom. So there is a child who's complaining, but then there is a child who's helping. There is a conflict. One child is coming and saying, but the other child is coming to help that, okay, I can help you. So just imagine how would Allah feel when one person is creating a conflict and another person is coming to help resolve that conflict. What would Allah feel at that time? I just, you know, like I as a teacher would say that this child who does it, 
is such a beautiful child and of course is um, is a normalized child there are two kinds of children in the classroom one deviated and one normalized a normalized child does this you know a normalized child Montessori says is quite settled and he would take care of things around him take care of the environment take care of the children be more obedient to the teachers so that's a normalized child and a deviated child is the one who create problems <laughs> who, who who is more destructive in the classroom who wouldn't who would definitely make a mess around and then create problems so you know when she mentions two uh, two of these children i when i and when i read quran i find the same thing that what allah mentions like you know one on being on a on a track and one not being on a track so and there are some some who would say sorry and accept their faults so th these are this is also one kind of a child who would who would realize that yes i did a mistake and i'm so sorry for that and don't the teacher like them of course they love them oh you realized your mistake that's okay keep going now keep going because allah wants us to keep going and um, and then there are some children who who would never admit their mistake even if they are wrong so just imagine people like us being in humans like committing mistakes again and again and then not admitting them not even accepting that they are wrong what would allah think of those i just imagine and then i would and then i would like go back to quran and see what allah would do with them um and then there are children that uh, would make a mess and then uh, you know and the and the and and the teacher would give them a warning so just like that allah gives them warning and then that child when he's fine he's in a good mood will come and hug you because today it happened to me a child made a mess and i had to give him like you know like oh that's not right i had to discipline him by making a firm decision for him but then he and he took that firm decision but then later on he came to me hugged me and say and then and i was like totally fine oh that's nice uh, so you're back to yourself so you know sometimes people are like those too they make a mess they make things worse but then they come back again hug you and then they tell you that they are fine so what happens then again allah forgive them allah forgive them again and again so and some are broken some children like i was talking about this child who's broken who said that it's hard for him to take the work today but he will take it after two days so then again allah wouldn't take care of them those people are the ones who are offering sabr allah would definitely take care of them and uh, be more conscious about their needs so allah will definitely be more conscious about their needs because they are missing their beloved ones those are the ones who have who found some relationship in a hard time like maybe going through some hard time maybe not understanding their relationships you know with uh, with the people around them and you know struggling with the relationship so those people i think are the ones whom allah would be more definitely so those are the people of sabr so this was one and uh, there is one more and that's surah number three uh, again surah imran ayat number 192 our lord indeed whoever you admit to the fire you have disgraced him and for the wrongdoers there are no helpers so i think these are the ones who really do not admit their mistake who keep doing wrong and wrong in their life but they never admit their mistakes some children are like these and again if we, i keep it on human so what would allah do so this is what allah mentions in quran and of course for those for those there is a good news also for those who feared this is uh, surah number 3 again ayat number 198 but those who feared their lord will have gardens beneath which rivers flow abiding eternally therein as accommodation from allah and that which is with allah is best for the righteous and this is one um, 
uh, from the Sahih International. There is a, again for the same ayat another translation that's also beautiful. But those who fear their Lord, there shall be the gardens beneath which rivers flow, and therein they will live forever. A hus hospitality from Allah, and Allah's reward is best for the truly pious. Just imagine. So those children who are being who are saying sorry, and then again going back to their work, again taking care of the things around them in the classroom. Those children, those children who are concentrated, focused on their path, they are not deviated at all. They are on the righteous path. Those children. So wouldn't the teacher feel nice for them? Of course. Those who are taking care of the ones who are broken hearted. So those who are being a helper in the classroom, those children, I'm just thinking about how teacher would feel about them and and how Allah would feel about those people. So here is the translation and how Allah would reward them. And then we will see the hospitality of Allah one day. So if you have a fear of hereafter in your mind and you know that just like this classroom is going to come to an end, a teacher knows that she wants to pass every single child in the classroom and send to another grade. So Allah wants the same from us. Allah definitely is going to pass us through different tests and exams. And then he wants us to definitely pass the exam of the world. And then in hereafter, would he would want us to go to the heaven. He does not want us to go to hellfire. He is really merciful. But now after knowing the translation of quran and reading the quran and again and again we have to make the right choice because definitely those who are not being on the right path they are accountable they are accountable for what they are doing in the world they will be answerable if they are creating the mess in the world if they are being difficult for other people if they are breaking relationships if they are not understanding needs of the people around them, if they are not being kind, if they are not soft-hearted, if they are cruel, if they think that they are the only one who has their needs and who think of themselves only and who just think it's me, me and me. We have to realize this world is not for one single person. There is no me. Everybody is connected in some way to one another. Even everything around us, even animals are some way dependent. I once shared a picture, a mom fishing with the kids in the boat. And when she put the string down to catch the fish, the fish under the water had her babies around and the fish thought, I'm going to fetch the food for my young fish in the pond. Just imagine. Everybody is dependent on the other. And Allah made this world like that. But if that mother was conscious that there is another mother downstairs, would she do that? Would she still fish that fish? No. Allah made mothers that way. Allah made mothers in a way that she would understand the needs of the other mother. So when Allah had so much love in the mother, just imagine how much love would Allah have when he loves a child more, you know, 90 times more than an actual mother. I just imagine that Allah is so merciful. So can we imagine that he wants us to go to hellfire? No, he wants us to go to the heaven. So please realize what we are doing around, wrong. Please have sympathy for each other. Please make your family strong. This is just a small life. Life is going to end. The relations around you, the relationships, the beloved ones around you are, are very precious. Nothing is important in life. The relationships are really, really important. Keep them, keep them like this. You have to be united to support each other. Broken families can not be good examples for people. People struggle. Although Allah is there to support even broken families. Allah is there. He has a way. He can adjust. A broken family can get adjusted. I had a friend who died in her 30s. In her 30s. 
and her children they just got distributed in the whole family she had five children two children went to her sister-in-law one child went to the uncle you know the from the father's side and then two stayed with the grandmother the whole family got split split the worst case i have ever heard the worst case in my life i've ever heard so may god help may allah help all of us to be a united strong family we need each other we need comfort of each other a husband needs a happy wife when he comes back after a tiring day he wants a smiling happy wife in home and also the best support same is with the wife a wife needs a listening ear a listening ear she also goes through so much in her life so if the husband is only listening even though he's not listening deep inside but he still he says that i'm listening wife would be fine after telling the whole story she'll be fine same is with the kids the kids are there to tell you a story when they are coming back from school they want a listening ear and you are busy on your mobile and you are not listening to them just imagine how they would feel they have a beautiful story to share those are the children from 6 to 9 and 10 and 12 they want to tell you the stories but when they will be teenagers they wouldn't care too if you never cared in the early times for them and then same is with the mother the mother waits for the son too she waits the whole time he's going to come back he's going to listen to me because she's also a woman so divide a special time for a mother for your wife and for your kids because even your daughters are the same and the son of course definitely needs a partner a father going outside with the son playing with him engaging him in in his activities the the son is learning so much from the father and if a mother engages the son in the kitchen working how blessing it's going to be for that son to learn things to wash dishes and to cook because then he's going to be husband one day and would definitely help his family in doing the daily chores the daily chores for some people become such a great burden that they end up into divorce just the daily chores so please keep in mind nothing is big nothing is big around you your job your education your clothes your house your land your rank nothing is important family is important if your family is there united together with a strong bond you can even have satisfaction in a house of one bedroom or just two bedroom you don't need a lot of income you do not need a lot of education you do not need a big wardrobe you do not need a long car a big car uh, for being happy don't run after materialistic things allah is watching each one of us and allah wants us to be happy allah wants us to be going we just want to keep going with making our relationship strong around us okay so i'm going to see you next time in the next lecture again with with good hopes so please take care good good take care of yourself be nice to the people around you they want to see you smiling honestly take care allah wants you to smile all the time and be thankful thank you so much i'll see you in the next lecture please pray for me and i'm going to pray for you thank you